If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. It is 6.57, 72 degrees in downtown Sylacauga this morning and entering her 14th year <laughs> as Superintendent of Tyler County School, Dr. Suzanne Lacey with us this morning. Also, Dr. Angela Robinson, Literacy Coordinator for Tyler County School. Ladies, good morning to both of you. Good morning. good morning. Good to have you with us today. I hope your summer, even though it's fleeting for educators, has been good so far. It has been great. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, First of all, before we, we get into our topic, which is the Alabama Literacy Act this morning and how it applies to our schools, uh, we're just a few weeks away, uh, Dr. Lacey, from the start of our school year. And, uh, you know, last year was not good for anybody. Kind of update us on where we are now heading into the next school year. Okay, um, of course, last year, Jimmy Dale, Talladega County Schools was on a hybrid schedule and um, students were in two groups and came every um, two days and alternating Wednesdays. So back in March, around the 15th of March, we came back as one school district altogether. So our plans are to open the same way. Um, all of our protocols for cleaning and health and safety measures are still in place. Uh, we are still very cognizant about COVID. And um, I know I just read this week that Talladega County still has many cases, and that seems to be on the rise. Very so, high risk going on right Yes, now, sir. Anyhow. I think that's how it's denoted. And um, we are very cognizant of that. And, of course, safety and health and wellness are still top priorities. We will continue to monitor um, the situation, but we are starting full speed ahead and looking forward to what we hope is a sense of normalcy, but at the same time, uh, continuing to be cautious and, and very um, interested in, in the changing demographics and dynamics of, of COVID cases. One of the questions that, that I'm often asked as we head into the new school year is, what about masking? Yes, well, that is a hot topic, as you know. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so um, we are not requiring masks at this time, and um, if our students or staff members want to continue to wear a mask, that's certainly optional, but it's not a requirement at this time, and uh, um, that's how we're proceeding, how we ended the okay. school year, and plan to start in the same same fashion. All right, sounds good. Dr. Angela Robinson with us this morning, too. She's the literacy coordinator for Talladega County Schools, and Dr. Robinson, good morning. Uh, tell us about your role with the Talladega County School System. Well, this is starting my 23rd year with the school system. Oh, my goodness. So. Both y'all stayed so young. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I, I started as a first grade teacher, so I developed that love of teaching students to read and, and early on in my career and just have continued to see the importance of literacy in every grade level in every aspect. So I'm a transition to a reading coach for many years, technology coach before becoming administrator. So this is actually my first year as a literacy coordinator, which is very exciting because Dr. Lacey's vision is that every student in our county is a proficient reader, and um, I'm there to, to try to put feet to that, to that plan of making that happen mm -hmm. and helping administrators in the schools and teachers to put things in a place that will ensure we have proficient readers in our county, and specifically with um, the Alabama Literacy Act, we want that by third grade. We want that in kindergarten. We want it every step along the way as early as preschool. So, What does that actually done. mean, the <laughs> Alabama Literacy Act? What that actually means is that in 2019, the Alabama legislature passed a law, um, and it's called the Alabama Literacy Act, and it requires that every student by the end of their third grade year be proficient in reading, mm -hmm. be on grade level. And of course, beginning this new school year, Jimmy Dale, um, our feet will be held to the fire. And if students are not uh, proficient by the end of their third grade year, this school year, then the law requires that they be retained. So we are really um, have an aggressive campaign for reading achievement mm -hmm. um, that, that we work on every single day. And of course, this summer we've had a reading camp program um, for students that need that little extra push with reading. And that will continue as the new school year begins with after school intervention. And of course, um, a very rigorous program during the course of the school year to ensure that our students are mastering those skills that we know are so important um, for their future to be great readers. No doubt about it. Dr. Robinson, uh, the importance uh it can't be any more clearly spoken uh, of uh, the reading and, and that kind of thing. 
uh, where are we in Talladega County as far as literacy uh, program is concerned and reading and things like that? Well, we have a very strong core curriculum because it really starts with how you address all students just day in their day-to-day -day instruction and that you are providing students with the right books. You know where they are. You know their levels. We're screening students initially at the very beginning when they start kindergarten and then every year to see if there are any gaps in their proficiency that we need to address in the area of literacy. So that goes on all throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Beginning, middle, end, all different checkpoints every two weeks along the way for students that are showing that they have an issue we need to address. And so when we see those issues, we bring parents in, we develop what's called a student reading improvement plan. And the parents sit mm -hmm. side by side with administrators and reading coaches and develop that plan. And that, you know, it includes appropriate interventions, it includes that appropriate core instruction and those checkpoints. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting, there are many exciting things about the plan that tutor and we had over 500 students that attended the reading camp this summer oh, wow. which was exciting the buses um, picked them up brought them to and from home if they needed it and that was all free for students that was just to, to help close those gaps and get them mm -hmm. on level so great things are part of the plan um, the retention is definitely a piece that we're you know aware of and working towards um, that that doesn't happen for any student but Many, many good things um, are in the works for Talladega County with students reading proficiency this wow. year. Dr. Lacey, you gotta be awfully excited about that. We are excited mm -hmm. and I would be remiss if I didn't say something about our wonderful teachers mm -hmm. all throughout Talladega County. Um, of course, many of them have spent their time this summer in summer school instructing students. And um, part of this whole process, Jimmy Dale, with ensuring that we have proficient readers is also the part about our teachers and a really robust professional development program for teachers. Mm -hmm. Because we know if we don't improve our craft of teaching and we're if we aren't constantly working on that, then we're not gonna be the best we can be. So it's a very robust program to ensure that our teachers have the cutting edge strategies. And um, that is just something that Talaga County is known for and has been for a really long time. So we are so proud of our teaching staff, instructional staff, um, and support staff that works with our students to ensure this reading proficiency is, is on time and in place and certainly by the end of third grade. Now, how has computers enhanced helping our children read? Well, there are many different ways that they are, that, that, that it is enhanced. Sometimes if a child goes to the library and they get two or three books, they may read those books within a matter of an hour in their classroom. And so we have programs on our computer that one is called MON, where they have thousands and thousands of books that they can mm -hmm. go to their library. The teacher can help them select the book, make sure it's on their level, and it's there where they can read. In addition, we have assessments that screen those students and then put them on a pathway to work on those literacy skills that are customized for them. So as they advance, the skills continue to increase. If they continue to show, if they miss a few problems, then the, <laughs> then the program adapts and it goes down and, and yeah. offers them remediation. So many, um, many doors are open through technology yes. to enhance reading in our schools. Yeah. Uh Dr. Lacey, what role do parents and grandparents play yes. in this? That's a great question. I'm so glad that you asked that. Um, we are launching a very important campaign with our reading initiative this year um, that involves everyone. It involves our parents, grandparents, community members, and our public libraries. We have an outreach program to them mm -hmm. because everybody needs to be a part of this. Um, we do our part at the school level, but we also need our community partners and parents to you know, read with students, take them to the public library, any additional information um, and time that they spend with these children, their children, reading and practicing the skills, then we know that's going to make a huge um, dividend in, in their reading accomplishments. Yeah. So um, we see it as a community effort. And, you know, in our particular area, Jimmy Dale, we have wonderful public libraries, especially here oh, in yeah. Sylacauga. Mm -hmm. It is a model program, mm -hmm. so um, we're going to rely on those individuals to help um, get the word out and to promote uh, the importance and the volume of reading because that truly makes a difference in reading proficiency. Uh, uh, Dr. Robinson, I have several grandchildren, uh, and, and the youngest is four, mm -hmm. and he will say, he'll bring me a book, mm -hmm. and he'll say, Granddad, read to me. <laughs> The importance of reading at a young age. 
It, it cannot be understated. And I think that was one thing with, with being a first grade teacher is seeing the power in just an additional even 20 minutes a night to read. It increases students' words by 1.8 million a year oh, wow. to read. 20 minutes every night. If they start in kindergarten by the end of sixth grade, they will they are on track to outscore 90% of their peers who have not been reading 20 minutes a night. So even, you know, that, you know, you hear that research over and over, just that extra additional 20 mm -hmm. minutes. So, you know, I know when he brings you that book, you can't wait to <laughs> open it and read because there is just nothing more powerful and it impacts every content area, every subject area, every career requires being able to read and understand what you read. And Dr. Lacey, <laughs> my reading is usually with my four-year-old grandchild much longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, we're talking with Dr. Suzanne Lacey uh, entering her 14th year as superintendent of Tyler Lake County School System and Dr. Angela Robinson, literacy coordinator for Tyler Lake County Schools. Uh, let's, let's cut to the chase. From beginning at a young age, through senior in high school. Why is it so important that we mold our children and, and teenagers into a reading program for their future? Yeah, I think that is just critical um, at an early age. And we know that if we have not really targeted those reading deficiencies by first grade, then it's gonna be even more difficult after first grade for students to really get on track as far as reading proficiency. Um, you know, everything that we do these days, we have to have a foundation and a good foundation for reading skills. We need to be able to comprehend, we need to be able to dissect information, mm -hmm. um, and to be able to communicate. And all of that starts at a young age um, in kindergarten and even before at home uh, with vocabulary and um, just increasing that word volume so that students have that good foundation when they enter school. Um, another part of that, of course, and we are gaining more pre-K units uh, mm -hmm. where we're serving our four-year-olds, and we're seeing great results from that. And that's a program throughout Talladega County and the state of Alabama that's very near and dear to Governor Ivey's heart. And um, as we gain more pre-K units, we see the impact that that is making on our students um, when they enter kindergarten. And mm -hmm. they're just a little more ready mm -hmm. than they were if they had not gone through the pre-K program. But reading is the ticket to every child's future, every adult's future. And um, K-12 education is so important. And Dr. Robinson in her role, we have never had a literacy coordinator before. We, wow. have, we have never had one person just designated <laughs> to the cause of literacy and she's our first and she will be the best. And um, that's what makes it just a critical time in history that um, we are doing more and more each year to ensure that every student mm -hmm. um, is proficient in reading. And, you know, we have some kids, you know, after third grade, uh, even in high school, that we have specific reading issues and yeah. programs to address those. Yeah. So that will be part of Dr. Robinson's work in this yeah. trajectory of learning with literacy. What, what are, Dr. Robinson, what are some of those deficiencies that, that you can pinpoint this morning? Oftentimes you see students that have, if you know, if, if sometimes about fourth or fifth grade, teachers may think it's a comprehension issue. But when mm -hmm. you really screen and look, it starts with phonemic awareness or even phon you know, phonics, where they did not um, get all the skills necessary to decode a word, to break a word apart, to know the um, different phonemes and make that connection the, with the grapheme. So that's where they see, hear the sound and connect it to the print that it matches. And so um, there are 44 sounds in our English language. And so we're, we're shifting where we're not just um, in traditional classrooms. You would see the letter A and all these different words that start with A. Well, there are many different you know, apple says mm -hmm. apple, but about mm -hmm. doesn't say the ass sound when you say it. So we're we're shifting to um, some different approaches. One is a sound wall where we're really teaching students to connect those sounds to those letters. And um, but but oftentimes you see that it does go back to a phon phonetic issue. It goes back to a phonics issue where they have the language skills. They can comprehend the spoken language, and they can they students can. Um, break that apart, but when they see it on print, they need more word, we call it word attack skills. Mm -hmm. And you know, and when you and when you teach, um, even upper grade teachers, like Dr. Lacey was saying, middle and high school teachers, if you see a student struggling to attack those words and to break those words apart, then that's sometimes often the missing piece that can 
put uh, ultimately reading comprehension yeah. understanding what you read is mm -hmm. your goal if we're reading yeah. so you just have to pinpoint where the deficiency is and then and then have the right instruction in place to address it and dr lacy <laughs> it, it, it's not about embarrassing those students no no, it's not. It's it's just working with them to customize a plan mm -hmm. to help them be the very best they can be as a successful reader. And, um, you know, I can remember my own personal experience growing up in, in first grade. Phonics was a real issue for me. And I had to have extra intervention. Uh, and I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Now, of course, at the time, there was a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's certainly just to provide that additional level of support. And that's what I think we're so good at in Talladega County is recognizing the issues, doing continuous assessment with students to take care of the problem right then, not mm -hmm. wait you know, six months down the road or a year down the road to try to remediate the problem, mm -hmm. but to fix it right then. And that's really the key to reading proficiency and efficiency in doing our job as educators. Uh, Dr. Robinson, Alabama being in the heart of the South, we use a lot of slang words, and, and you know, I remember growing up, some of the words that, that I was taught was wrong words, wrong pronunciations, and how do you break that mold? Well, there's the this um, State Department of Education is promoting um, what's called science of reading, and it's a re research that's been around since the 1980s, so it's not new research, but they are making sure that's part of the Alabama Literacy Act that every teacher is trained in the science of reading, and it and, and one program that the State Department is highly recommending is called Letters, and it's a very intensive two-year training for most people. It takes two years to complete and it really teaches teachers and administrators how to pronounce the words, mm -hmm. how to articulate each sound, how not to add the uh sound at the end of every letter, you know, when you're teaching. Newscaster need to go through that class. <laughs> it, you know, the, uh, educators hold up mirrors, they look at their mouth. We're even teaching students how to, you mm -hmm. know, their mouth formation when they pronounce words and it's, it's all coming together. And so teachers are taking this training and they're excited to go in their classrooms and they see that it's working. They see that students are saying, oh, I didn't pronounce that word correctly. I need to look at how I'm saying it. Yeah. And they have mirrors that they're reading, small group tables, and they're, they're working on those. So bringing that up is so key because that is a definite issue, especially mm -hmm. In the South, where it and eh, you know, <laughs> pen and pen, you know, pen and eh, I mean, it just it goes on and on where the words we mispronounce, and so it just runs together. It just does. Yes. So we're we're trying to address that as well in this um, exciting time where the science of reading is. Mm -hmm. It really does. Um, hit all of those key areas that could cause a student, because that could definitely cause a student spelling issues. It could cause them reading issues. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Lacey, are there teeth in this Alabama Literacy Act? How serious is this? It's very serious because it is a law, and we are held accountable based on the mm -hmm. law and the stipulations in the law. So um, back in the session this spring, um, there was a push to um, postpone this retention requirement for students beginning the school year for third grade if they were not on grade level. And Governor Ivey vetoed that. And, um, and I, I think that was wise because we will have data from our first assessment, our statewide assessment coming up. Um, the data will be ready in September. So I think it's very... Um, important that that data is reviewed to see where our students are. The legislature can go back and revisit that if the data is not where it needs mm -hmm. to be. But uh, like any other law that the legislature passes, then there are accountability measures. Um, and there are lots of them that we are reporting information and data to our State Department of Education. Um, there's constant communication, constant um, training, and that moment of perfecting our skills to, to ensure that we're meeting all of the requirements. So lots of checks and balances, and um, there's not a day that goes by <laughs> that we are not focusing on mm -hmm. not only the Alabama Literacy Act, but just quality instruction. Um, you know, that's a goal every single day, not just because we have a law that says kids have to read on grade level at the end of the third grade. Mm -hmm. um, that is just 
part of, of our work, but our goal every single day is just to produce really great and well-prepared students. Yeah. And before we go this morning, both of you are veterans in education, and uh, uh, Dr. Robinson will we'll begin with your final thoughts. What's so special about Talladega County Schools? <laughs> Talladega County Schools has so many things that make it just the most wonderful school system to be a part of, but the way that they grow, they grow their staff and that, they, that we have so many opportunities for professional development, professional growth, to choose where you're interested, and they develop leaders. So in Talladega County, you're supported. You have districts, it's beginning with Dr. Lacey, the Board of Education, we have a phenomenal board the coordinators at central office and, and they just support administrators who in turn support teachers. So we're always looking where, where, you know, where is someone and how can we help them reach their potential? Mm -hmm. And, and they, and we cultivate that. And that begins with, you know, Dr. Lacey's vision that everyone's equipped to be the very best they can be for the students in Talladega County. Mm -hmm. And so um, the professional development opportunities and opportunities for growth that I've had are second to none. I feel like in just, Appreciate those wow. opportunities, uh, Dr. Lacey. Uh, let's let's be real here. You've been, this is your fourteenth year uh, as Talladega County School Superintendent. You could have gone other places. What's so special to you about Talladega County Schools? Well. I think it's just an honor to work for the Talladega County Board of Education. I started my career here in 1984 as a classroom teacher. And quickly, I could see it was a special place. And Angie mentioned a lot of the things that, that really do make us special. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, we work for kids. Our main goal every single day is to provide extraordinary opportunities for kids. Um, Talladega County is a high poverty rural district, and there are so many wonderful things and things that are happening right here in our county that aren't happening across the nation. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have that level of expertise and the expertise that we've created among our own um, teachers and administrators and support team, it's pretty incredible. Um, we didn't have to go way far out of Talladega mm -hmm. County to find the level yeah. of expertise that we need. And that's unusual in a rural county. Mm -hmm. And um, I think also being able, we have 17 schools throughout the district, as you know, they're in every nook and cranny, <laughs> cranny in Talladega <laughs> County. It's a very long county. And to be all on the same page, working for um, the best interests of our students, I think is, is such a thing to be proud of and something that I definitely um, talk about a lot. And, uh, you know, I think creating that conversation of excellence of all of the things that we're doing in Talladega County is really special. And um, people have seen that and know our reputation. Yeah. And our goal is just to get better and better every single year. And finally, uh, for people to find out more about the Alabama Literacy Act and how it applies uh, to their students in Talladega County Schools, where do they go? Okay. Um, they can go to our website. They can go to the Alabama State Department of Education website. And most importantly, I think check with your child's local school. Mm -hmm. um, our administrators, we have reading coaches in every school. They are well equipped. Our teachers are well informed with the requirements and expectations. So I think, you know, the, the first place to go would be the local school that your child is enrolled in. Yeah. Well, I don't know if we still ring bells to start the school session, but uh, it won't be long. The school starts back. Uh, Dr. Angela Robinson, Literacy Coordinator of Tyler Lake County Schools, and Dr. Suzanne Lacey, the Superintendent of Tyler Lake County Schools. Thank you both for coming this morning. Thank, Thank you, you so much. What an honor to be here and see you again, yeah. Jimmy Dale. Thanks. Got more day break coming up right after this.